The Yankees. The Yankees wanted Justin Verlander, but unfortunately, he said no to the Yankees. Gosh darn, he wanted to come play with the Astros, and the Astros made some moves on Friday, and we have West End from the Talking Astros joining us tonight on this edition of the Locked on Astros podcast, which starts hey. now. Uh, I'm ecstatic to be here, man. Welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H Town Wheelhouse Chancy. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we have to you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talks Astros. Find the show at Locked On Astros. Your team every day. Weston, where can we find you at? Uh, I am talking Astros on YouTube, and I am Weston Kaliski on Twitter. All right, so uh, I know I cut you off earlier, so go and finish what you're trying to say. Nah, I'm I'm just ecstatic to be here, man. A uh, couple of uh, issues came up when I was trying to get on here during the uh, World Series streams, and uh, it sort of felt like it was becoming a hunt for the Loch Ness monster to get me on here. Of like, no, no, it's gonna happen eventually. But I'm I'm ecstatic to be here. Alrighty, guys. So, guys, thank you for making Lockdown Astros podcast your first listen every day, whether it's on YouTube. Keep on subscribing. Keep on um, liking us and keep on listening to Lockdown Astros podcast on your way to work, on your way home from work, when you're supposed to be working. Just listening to <laughs> Lockdown Astros podcast every day, all off season, And uh, we just love talking about baseball. So um, we got uh, Mr. Corona saying this is his two worlds colliding. I know he's one year. Uh, listeners during the season. So before we get started, tell us a little bit about your podcast and what do you do? Uh, yeah. So back in 2020, you know, something uh, occurred and I was going out of my mind. I was just super excited for uh, baseball coming back towards July of that year. And I'm like, oh, I'm, I should make a YouTube channel for this. And, you know, I watch a bunch of football, you know, YouTubers and hockey YouTubers that make, you know, daily videos or a video for each game. And I'm like, no one does game for game really that I was able to find for an individual baseball team other than you guys. And uh, I was like, I, you know what? I want to do that. And I started it up. It's been exciting. I've loved every video I've made for them. And uh, yeah, that's, been a, that's the spiel for me. All right. All right, cool. So, yeah, we got a lot to talk about today. And one of the things I want to talk about is a kind of recap of the roster moves that the Astros made uh, on Friday night. And I know that it was the deadline to protect players from the Rule 5 um, deadline. And uh, we had the Astros lost two familiar uh, players. That was Garrett Stubbs, Kent Emanuel. Kent Emanuel went to the Phillies. And then also uh, Garrett Stubbs went to the Phillies as well in a trade. So that was just kind of weird how Kent Emanuel was claimed on waivers and Garrett Stubbs was traded to the Phillies as well. So uh, this was a situation where um, they just needed roster space to add four players. So uh, what are your thoughts about Kent Emanuel first leaving? Oh, man, that one, that one hurt. Like the Stubbs one hurt as well, but losing Kent Emanuel, just releasing him was particularly tough. I mean, I know it was only like, what, 15 innings or so this past season, but that insane debut for him of eight and two thirds out of the pen just was insane. And he was a guy that I really saw have a lot of upside for us. And I was excited to have him this year, you know, going into 2022, maybe late to the end of the year when he'd come back or 2023 and having him be traded was just that one. That one hurt a bit for me. Yeah, I, I know a, a lot of fans probably saw a little bit too much in Kent Emanuel, but um, I guess we'll never really know as an Astros fan what Kent Emanuel could offer. But we'll always have that eight innings of relief where he just came in and shut the door. And it was just impressive what he did. And it just seemed like the Astros never really had the faith in him, whether it's he was not healthy. I'm not sure what really happened there, but – they just really never gave him the chance, and maybe he'll get that chance with the Phillies once he's perfectly healthy. And it looks like he's back. Um, he's uh, trying to come back from his injury. So, and I know um, Del uh, 
Diot says, what, what are the chances we land Marcus Simeon or Marte? We'll talk about that in the second segment. But right now, we're kind of looking at the the roster deadline. So Garrett Stubbs. Stubbs was not, especially with the fact that you have Jason Castro, Martin Maldonado, and Corey Lee possibly coming up this year. There is no space for Garrett Stubbs. They tried putting him in outfield last year. They tried kind of finding some roster space for him. But he is just, he just was not, he didn't really have a spot and they needed another spot on 40 man roster because Justin Verlander still has not been added to this roster and it was already at 40. So now it is at 39. So Garrett Stubbs, is this a big loss? To the team, probably not as much to my heart. It is because I, I'm not mentally over the Stubbs trade, man. I, I can't explain why. But he is one of my favorite players on the Astros. And so, like, I understand that his upside as a catcher, I mean, he's 28 now. So he's, realistically, he wasn't going to be a long-term solution, even if he just next year went insane and was one of the best catchers in the league. But, man, him on the bench and on the, you know, in the dugout was just, he was always high energy, always seemed like a super nice guy. And I really hope it works out for him in uh, Philly. It hurts me personally, but I get why you cut him or traded him overall for the team. You got, I believe, one of the top 30 prospects for Philly in their system yes. in exchange. So that's solid. That's solid value to get back in a trade. And yeah, with, yeah. like you said, the catchers that we have, like Maldi is definitely the starter for next year. Debate on how you want, debate how you feel that, you know, amongst yourselves. Castro is one of the best backup catchers in the league, if not the best. And I mean, Corey Lee, if he's what we think he is, he's going to be a stud. And there's only so much longer the miners can contain a guy with that amount of talent. So it makes sense as a organizational move, but yeah, I love stuff. So it's going to bother me a little bit. Yeah. Logan Cerny is the guy the Astros got. He uh, is a 10th round pick in 2021 in his junior season at Troy. He slashed 332, 424, 694 with 17 doubles, four triples, 15 home runs, and 12 stone bases in 51 games. So this is a guy that is now in the Astros top 20, top 30. He's the uh, Astros 28th overall. And once he rises through the Astros farm system, he could rise. So this is what the Astros do. They tend to trade their, their players that they don't have room for, for future talent. And that's what uh, good GMs do. So I'm um, going back to who they added. They added Jeremy Pena, Sean Dubin. This, these were the the, the mm -hmm. obvious ones. And Jonathan Bermudez and Joe Perez were the other two. So uh, Bermudez was the minor league pitcher of the year. And Perez is the guy that kind of uh, came out nowhere last year. So these are a kind of... Um, those were the four players that the Astros had to protect. A lot of people are like, well, what about the catcher? Um, the guy they got in the, what was his name? The guy they got in the, the straw trade. Um, oh, Mason? No, not no. Mason. No, that's a pitcher. Catcher, what am I? Oh. <laughs> the catcher, Garcia, I forgot was, I think it was, um, but the catcher they got, uh, he is in a, uh, I can't remember his name uh, at, at the moment, but he is a, uh, like a single, a class A catcher. You're not going to, as a major league team, you're not going to select a, a single a class A catcher and have him, Yadier Diaz, I think that's his name, uh, but you're not going to have him as the, uh, like a starting catch, like you're not going to select him as a rule five draft. I, so I think that yeah. he'll be safe, but he had a great uh, season as well. But I just think that the Astros did a great job here. They protected who they had to protect because I think that Dubin would be, would have been selected. Bermudez would have been selected. Perez, maybe. And Pena, yeah, he is your, most likely your starting shortstop this next year. So yeah. I really think the Astros made a good, um, good moves there. I agree. You know, uh, I mean, the big name, obviously, is Pena being put on the 40-man roster, even though it's just to protect him from the Rule 5 draft. But uh, I thought everything made sense. I didn't think there was anything particularly that, like, blew me away or anything. Okay. Yeah. So what was funny is the fact that uh, there was a report today that uh, Justin Verlander turned down a one-year deal from the Yankees for, get it, $25 million. Mm. And he signed a one-year plus a player option – for 25 million for the Astros. So uh, I think he likes the Astros more. So oh. I guess we can kind of think about that in a way. So 
Um, what do you think about that little diss there? Or you think that just, it just, um, I mean, you think he had both offers and he's like, you know what? I'd rather go with the um, pretty much guaranteed money. I think there's a mix of the familiarity with Houston and he already knows that he meshes well with this team and this organization and certainly the city, I mean, adores him, but man, oh man, seeing that this morning, just that put a smile ear to ear on me seeing that he turned down a contract that was pretty much identical. I mean, granted the player option, but an identical contract from the Yanks and basically just told him to go kick rocks. That that was uh Ah, chef's kiss from Verlander right there. That was exciting to see. Yeah, so um, I would bet on uh, the, some of these uh, young kids like uh, Jeremy Pena making a big impact next year, especially if they don't go out and uh, get an impact uh, shortstop. We're going to talk about that in next segment. But it's Thanksgiving, and we know what that means. It's football, and nothing goes better with football than turkey and betting. Bet Online has you covered all holiday season. More props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all sports actions this Thanksgiving. Head to our new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus with new promo code locked on to receive your bonus. And it's not just football. Bet Online has pro and college hoops, NHL, boxing, UFC, even your fa- favorite v- Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of this amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite uh, sports action. Bet online, we're stuffed with deals this Thanksgiving. And does this sound familiar? You got one device that lets you catch the game live, and another one that lets you stream all your favorite shows. You're watching spot sports highlights on your phone, and you've got your neighbor's best friends log in for the good stuff. Well, I want to tell you about the simple way to get all the entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream, and it lets you bring your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there's no annual contract, so get rid of the clutter and the confusion. Get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device uh, required. Content varies by package. Um, and um, blah, blah, blah. All right. So I guess that's it. Um, so anyway, uh, so let's go and move on to the Can big- I say one thing real quick? Yes. Uh, Mr. Corona with the, but it's a bad contract according to Yankees fans. They're saying that with tears streaming down their face. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they would love to have They Justin are so Hurley. bitter about that. They would love like, to have Dustin Verlander. They would have love to have any free agent that, uh, like Carlos Correa. If mm-hmm. Carlos Correa signs with the uh, Tigers, they oh. would say, "Oh yeah, yeah, he was a cheater oh, anyway. No. He didn't like. Yeah. Oh, he didn't like cheater. Like all I saw because I follow a lot of Yankees accounts because I'm you know a Rangers fan and Judd's fan, and all of them were just losing it. Like yeah, you know, well, I mean, maybe Correa didn't do that much wrong. Like just so quick when it was a rumor that he might go to the Yanks. And then at noon that day, they were like, nah, nah, Kurt Verlander needs to come here. And then afterwards, overpayment anyway. I mean, he's coming off of a tummy John surgery, you know. Like, I'm like, oh, man, don't you don't you need a baby noise to back up that quickly? <laughs> they just, <laughs> yeah, it's, it. it's kind of, uh, did you see that Derek Jeter kind of responded to Carlos uh, Correa's comments? He, he was like, um, yeah, yeah, I, I don't. I don't pay attention to that. I'm not going to even respond to that. And he, you could tell that uh, Jeter was just, like totally pissed. You can just tell in his oh, mannerism. Yeah. He was just like, yeah, that, that dude dissed me. I'm not going to even respond to him. And uh, so uh, like Jerry uh, Harrison uh, Jr. like responded. He's like, yeah, um, as a former player, I'm like, I could just feel the disrespect coming from uh, Jeter right there. So, man, yeah. I get that. But Gray is just saying the truth. I mean, you can look at some defensive numbers for Jeter. I respect the heck out of Jeter, but man, oh man, defensively, just, oh, I get the gold glove awards, but you can look at some DRS numbers during those seasons. And he was just, I mean, one of them was a negative 27 DRS during one of his five gold gloves. That's right. insane to me. All righty. So one of the things I do want to address in this show is I've seen a lot of talk over, well, now we have Justin Verlander. What do we need more? Do we need a shortstop or do we need a center fielder? A lot of people say, well, we got uh, Chaz McCormick. 
We got Jake Myers, even though he's not going to be ready for the start of the season. We have Jose Siri. Why do you need a center fielder when you when you need to go address shortstop? Uh, I, I do have the stats, and I do want to. I'm not going to go over all the stats, but as shortstops this year, Astro shortstop hit 270 with a 830 OPS, uh, OPS with a uh, S OPS plus of 125 with 27 home runs, 95 RBIs. As a center fielder this year, they batted 270 with a 727 OPS with a S OPS plus of 103 with 12 home runs and 76 RBIs. So, I, well, let's talk about stolen bases too. The shortstops, zero. The uh, center fielders, 22. So, which position sounds like the biggest point of need for the Astros? Okay, so I am a big, when it comes to like a sport like football, I'm a big running back by committee guy. And so I can kind of survive with the Astros having a massive rotational, you know, thing going out there in center field with. Myers, even though he isn't quite healthy yet and might be a few months into the season, but with McCormick and Siri, I'm fine having them sort of platoon it there. Shortstop to me, it's, it's the number one position on the defensive or the number two on the defensive spectrum. It's a big position and you can look at the defense of the guys in center field and they are, I mean, McCormick was one of the best defenders in center field overall this season. Siri was fantastic. And if I'm not mistaken, Myers in his short little stint was also really good. I, I think they can handle it. I know it was just, I mean, fractures, like fragments of a season for them out there. Right. I mean, all of them were rookies last year, and they did a fantastic job holding down the fort. But with shortstop, that is just such an integral piece. I kind of think shortstop is the bigger need right now. And obviously with the names like Sterling Marte floating around, that interests me a lot. But right now for me, I think I'm thinking shortstop. Okay, but what if you can bring in a Starling Marte? With his experience, he is a he can be your leadoff hitter. He can come in and steal you what he's advancing age. If you bring him in at maybe three to four years, he can steal you still 40 bases, maybe hit you 15 home runs and score like 120 RBI. Sorry, sorry, score you 120 runs and just be your leadoff guy. And then you just have like um, Aled Ms. Diaz as your shortstop until Jeremy Pena is ready. Or you could platoon the two of them, I suppose, also. Yeah. Um, the thing is, with Starling Marte, it, he's a stud player. He's a very good player. Last season, uh, one for the season, a 134 WRC plus on uh, fan graphs. And also, it was nearly identical for his WRC plus between Miami and Oakland. So he doesn't have like a, it's not a different ballpark thing where, oh, he was fantastic with one team and then terrible when he got traded or what have you. So I do think he could transfer to another team pretty well. Yeah. So <sighs> and a name like that, he's big. He's very, very good offensively, fantastic defensively. I believe outs above average had him, yeah, the 82nd percentile. So if you get a guy like that, I'm not going to complain by any means. Like you get a top 50 player in Sterling Marte, I'm not going to, you know, huff and puff. I still feel shortstop might be the way to go but I'm not going to shed any tears if you go get a guy like Starling Marte. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm still all aboard the Trevor Story Express. I really <laughs> think that they, they need to go all for him. If they can't bring back Carlos Correa, which I really don't think they can, I really think they need to go get Trevor Story. But Marte is such an interesting, intriguing option. He offers the speed that the Astros just don't have. And uh, since they traded away Miles Straw, they don't have that option. And I don't see them, anybody on the team, having that type of speed. And so, like, looking at position, the only one they really had that had a lot of speed was um, Straw, and they tr traded him. I know Tucker has some speed, but um, as he becomes more of a power hitter, I think you're, you may see some of that speed go away a little bit. But Marte can add that speed. So that's something that – is very intriguing. I know story has some speed, but uh, he does have that injury history. And maybe if he doesn't steal as much, I know Marcus Simeon uh, is a, somebody that keeps on coming up, but 
I just don't see Marcus Simeon coming here. I think that especially with him having a, as good a season as he has, he's going to demand a lot more money than the Astros are willing to pay. And I just think that the Astros would take risk with somebody like Story over Simeon. Story is a super exciting option. And if it's not going to be Correa and it's not going to be Pena, I think it needs to be Trevor Story. That's yeah. where I'm at on the shortstop thing. Okay, so I, I guess, I guess the, the question is, Weston, um, if you had to pick one, you would go shortstop. With your, I think uh, I would go shortstop. If you had to go with your money. I think I would go shortstop. And my argument for that as well, because you mentioned stolen bases with Sterling Marte. I think Sterling Marte would want to steal bases. I'm not sure if the Astros as an organization who seem very analytic-minded would want him going for 50 attempts or 60 attempts or so. And so my fear would be that one of the big attributes that you would get in Sterling Marte might be kind of left on the shelf. Yeah. Whereas with Story, he's just, he's a big name. I think if it's not Correa, it's going to be Story. Like if we do decide to go spend on a free agent shortstop. Well, uh, I know uh, Steve Harden brings up a thing. Well, why bring, you have all these young guys. Why bring in a center fielder when you have all these young guys? So keep in mind, like we brought up, that Michael Brantley is going to be a free agent after the yeah. season. So you're going to have plenty of opportunities for these young guys to play after in this year. And you always have playing time with fourth and, and fifth outfielders like uh, Michael Brantley's. He ain't getting any younger. No. So, and so you're going to have plenty of time for these guys to play. So I think that uh, just because you bring in Starlin Marte, you can get this opportunity. You still get them opportunities to play. So, um, and we already squashed a bug about Bregman playing shortstop. That's not going to happen. So uh, there, there's just intriguing uh, kind of way to kind of address the situation. And I'm, I'm curious to see how James Click kind of handles this situation. Uh, but um, it, what way do you think that Click's going to handle it? I honestly don't really know after the Verlander signing. Because I thought he was either going to go all out on like a guy like Verl or on Correa and let Verlander walk. And then he made that big play. He just, I don't want to say he threw money out the window and didn't think about that with Verlander, but he splashed a pretty nice chunk of change on him. And after a move like that, I could see him going, just whipping out the wallet and making it rain on a guy like Correa or story. So I, if I had to say right now, I think we're going to sign a big name shortstop. I think I, I think Pena is going to be on the roster and I think he's going to be a rotational piece by like June. But mm -hmm. I really like the utility guy, maybe like a, a Ludden right. Stevens replacement. But I can really see us going for a story or a Correa guy. And somebody said that story would get a one year deal. There's no way that story would get a one year deal. <laughs> no. Uh, he's... This is his first time free agency. Uh, he's not going to get a a one-year deal he's gonna get a five-year deal max he's not gonna get a carlos Correa type deal no. carlos Correa. Uh, by the way uh it's been reported that carlos Correa will not accept a deal for less than what uh francisco Lindor got i think i don't know if he's gonna get it i heard that and just started laughing <laughs> like i i adore carlos Correa. he is one of my favorite players but I am not paying a guy with that roller coaster type of statistics who year in and year out could be totally different offensively, 35 plus million dollars. Like the minute he said, I want to I want to beat Lindor's contract. I'm like, Oh, he's gone. Oh, okay. Bye, bye man. Have, a, have fun in free agency. Like that yeah. was a madness to me. Yeah. So I, I just don't see that happening. So uh, something, uh, especially when, um, like a lot of people say, well, why can't we do both? Because you don't have the money, especially when you just threw uh, Verlander that 25 million. Uh, there's no way that you can uh, go ahead and bring Story and Marte in because so it's going to be either or. And uh, if you really, really want that speed of Marte and what he can offer, what he can bring to his team, then you just can't do that. So yeah, I, yeah, I think the cat is stealing the show here. <laughs> So um, let's go ahead and address the bullpen a little bit. Uh, the bullpen is something that doesn't get talked about. The Astros did upgrade the rotation. Now the Astros have seven starters. And I know they're not going to use all seven starters all year round. Imagine and they did. Well, yeah, yeah. I know they're <laughs> going to use them, but uh, not as a seven-man Imagine rotation. just a seven-man, that madness of a seven-man rotation. 
no, that, that feels was, like an eternity between starts. Justin Verlander would be like, you, you got to be freaking kidding me. I've got to wait eight days, seven days, eight days sometimes. No, this isn't going to happen. Uh, no, but um, that's not going to happen. But no. uh, let's take a look at the bullpen. I know that the Astros lost some big pieces. Uh, somebody brought up Yemi Garcia earlier. Mm. I don't know if he's a big piece that the Astros will go for, but they lost Kendall Graveman, Yemi Garcia, and finally Brooks Raley. Uh, and uh, Christian Javier is likely going to be going to the rotation. Mm -hmm. Uh, So what's going to happen to the bullpen? They still have Ryan Presley, Ryan Stanek, Phil Maton uh, as the, like the key pieces to the bullpen. So what do you, what do you see them doing to kind of fill in the rest of the pieces? I would, it's tough. I know we're on the topic of money and like, we don't have infinite funds. I I feel like Kendall Graveman is a guy you need to bring back. You gave away a couple of you gave a pretty big asset away last year at the deadline for him in a guy like Abraham Toro. So I would I think he's a guy you gotta try to bring back. And I know you said finally get rid of Brooks Raley. I'm I'm a big guy of Rayleigh, man. I I think you could get him back for cheap. I think his expected and underlying numbers are really good, and I think it's just a matter of time before he breaks out. I know he's a little bit older. So I think yeah, but get him he like struggles a, in the playoffs. I mean, he's yeah, he was good towards the the end of the season, but you can't trust him in the playoffs. That's fair, <laughs> but I still think depending on how cheap the contract, we need bodies in the bullpen right now. Right. That was the thing last year, and if you can get him on like a one or two year deal for five million a year, I think that's the thing you go. Yeah, I'll do that, and okay. just hope that the last end of the season wasn't a fluke, which I don't think it was. You can look at some numbers like FIP. And just his exit velocity on average was hilarious. And I I think he's a guy you might try to bring back on a, like a super cheap deal. But even if you let him walk, I think Kendall Graveman, you give up a fantastic prospect in Abraham Toro, which kind of seems like you could use right now, where he could maybe shift over to shortstop for Kendall Graveman. And if you just let him walk, it just it feels kind of like a waste in a way. Yeah. And I, I just don't see them going out and getting Rossiel and Glacius no. because he's a great uh, reliever, but the problem is he is the best reliever probably out there. He's going to come with a qualifying offer, so you're going to have to give up a draft pick. And the Astros are just not out there going for the top guy. We haven't seen that. Who are they trading for? They're not going out there and trading for, what was his name, the guy that the White Sox eventually got um, – Craig Kimball. Yeah. They're not going out and getting them. They're, they're go, going and trading for the Phil Matons and the Yumi Garcias. They're We're going, making the savvy trades. So We're not yeah. going to go get the massive name, which like I wanted Craig Kimbrell and we're going to uh, kind of flamed out when he got over to uh, the South side for the regular season. Looked pretty solid in the postseason, but the regular season was nightmare just a little bit South. But I, yeah, I don't think we're going to go get any of like, I think if we get a big name, it's either retaining Correa or, uh, let me phrase it. I think we might go get one of the big name position players, but when it comes to the pitching staff, I don't think we're going to make a big move at one of the top two or three relievers or of the starters at this point left. I think a guy like Kendall Graveman is right around where we would want to bring back. Cause yeah. I think you could get him not cheap, cheap, but at a very fair price because he kind of was, he was not the same filmmate or not, Filmathon. He was not the same Kendall Graveman when he got to the Astros that he was with the Mariners. He was still very good, but, but just playoffs, not that same he, level. He upped his level. Oh, his yeah, game in the playoffs, he was very good. Yeah. So, uh, but somebody that I wanted to bring up is Colin McHugh. Colin McHugh made it very well known during the season that he wanted to be back on the Astros team because his wife even had to say, Colin, stop. Because uh, he he said that I tried to get back on the the uh-huh. team and his wife was like, no, Colin, stop. you got to not do that. Um, <laughs> I am a massive guy of uh, Carl McHugh. I I pulled it out. Uh, this baseball he threw it to me after a bullpen session on my birthday when I went and watch a Astros game. So I've always been a massive fan of Colin McHugh. Uh, he was ridiculously good last year. I want to say sub two ERA if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, like, he was bonkers with how good he was with the Rays. And if you get him back, I'm I'm going to be doing cartwheels through this room for a guy like uh, Colin McHugh. He's loves the Astros. Astros fans, I mean, nearly worship the ground he walks on. 
And a guy like that coming back would be fantastic. Yeah, some other guys the Astros could look at is maybe Daniel Hudson, uh, Kerry, uh, Corey uh, Knable, uh, Hector Neris, uh, Brandon Box um, Berger. Then you got Aaron Loop, uh, Andrew Chafin, uh, Jake Diekman, and uh, Rayleigh. I guess um, Brooks Rayleigh again. So if you want to bring him back for cheap, like you said, but uh, I, I would say that Colin McHugh just makes a lot of sense. I think that he would, I, I don't think he'll take a hometown discount, but I think that he would love to come back and play for Houston. I think that him and his wife enjoyed being here. So I think that he would love to come back. That's kind of why I wanted to do this. And just cause Colin McHugh just, he, he just feels like he should be Houston Astro. I, I agree. I don't think he would take the hometown discount. Like you said, I don't think he'd take like, you know, way less, but I think if it's an equal deal and it's a choice, I think it'd be like the Justin Verlander thing of if it's two deals that are the exact same money, he's going to Houston. Yeah. I even think potentially a tiny bit cheaper. He would still come here because he clearly adores the fans. He, he's a big Houston guy. And I, that's kind of one of those stars are starting to align once again, things I could totally see him back here with us. Yeah. So, um, Marcus Stroman, a lot of people are talking about Marcus Stroman and no, the Astros are not going to go get Marcus Stroman because they don't have uh, room for Marcus Stroman. They already have STEM starters, but uh, Marcus the more Stroman, the merrier. <laughs> Marcus Stroman said this on Twitter, Cubs, Astros, Red Sox, Padres, and Giants fans are super active too. I love feeling the love Marcus Stroman. So uh, Marcus Stroman is just saying that all these fans are like reaching out to him saying, Hey, come, uh, come play for the Astros. I just, uh, I just don't think that we need another starter. I know you're going to say, well, you're, we can always use another starter. Just look at last year, look at 2017 when the only starter we really had six, I mean, uh, consistently all year was Mike freaking fires. Um, and until the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's a guttural reaction when you bring up that name. <laughs> yeah, but um, so it just I I don't think I don't see the Astros spending money on uh, the type of money to bring Marcus Stroman in, especially after you just went out and spent the money on Justin Verlander. I I completely agree with that. Uh, I look, I love Marcus Stroman. And, you know, Stro on the Stros would be kind of perfect. I could see the merch now, but I just, you don't need an eighth starter. I mean, right now the rotation is way over crammed. And are you counting Javier as a starter or are you still keeping him in the pen with that mark? Um, I, I, I think I'm um, counting him as a starter right now because okay. that's what they want to do. Yeah, um, like that's what I, I want. They put him in there and I think that he'll yeah. be more effective as a starter, but we saw him kind of kind of uh, get into the groove as a reliever at the end of the season, yeah. too. In the postseason, he was fantastic as a yeah. relief pitcher, but in the regular season, he was better in, I want to say, every statistic as a starter versus a reliever. So yeah. uh, right now, like your rotation could potentially be Verlander, McCullers, Fromber, Javier, and then maybe a Yurkiti for your five. Like, that's that's great. You don't need more. Like, if Verlander is 70% of what he was in 2019, you have a stud there. You have a top 15, top 10 American League pitcher. Like, you're you're set. You're going to have a top three of (laughs) Verlander, McCullers, and Fromber. Like, that's that's fantastic. You know, Lance, who coming off of uh, some Cy Young votes, which is fantastic. He was magnificent last year. Right. Like... And, and I've seen a lot of people and Luis Garcia are good than in, in their own. Yeah. I, can, I yeah. forgot about the rookie of the year nominee yeah. like that. Yeah. You can just, this rotation in. is good. Yeah. And then the thing is when you don't think about what the rotation is, you're not going to use all seven of them or all eight of them. So you're going to have two of those guys as long relief, which is going to help the bullpen a lot. Right. You could put uh, your kitty. He was, pretty solid in the past few years as long relief. So I'm fine or just as relief in general. So I'm fine having him out there in the bullpen. I mean, it's a stacked rotation. It's not going to be the 2018 rotation, which is, I mean, otherworldly, but you're going to have a, you're going to have a darn good rotation as far as the American league is concerned. Yeah. Alrighty. So, uh, Thank you. All. Thank you for joining us. Weston. Can you tell us a little bit more about your, uh, your YouTube channel? Yeah, so I know it's uh, talking Astros. I do uh, 
Jets and Rangers videos, which is very strange for hockey and football, and that's what I'm sort of doing a lot of right now. But every game throughout the regular season, after every single game, I am making a recap video. I've done that for the past few years. I'm going to do that again this coming up year. I'm working on a awards video for them that's probably going to come out mid to late December. Uh, I don't really know what else to say, man. It's pretty straightforward. Every single game, I'm coming out with a video. I try to keep them relatively like under 10 minutes or so, but I, I don't really know what else to say, man. It's uh, Where can they find you on Twitter? Uh, Weston Kaliski on Twitter, which is K-U-L-I-S-K-Y. It's a very strange sp- I No one can get that right. Okay. Ironically, also, no one can get the first name right, which is very strange to me. <laughs> All right, so guys, make sure you keep, uh, keep on making Locked on Astros podcast your first listen every day, and um, we hope that you have a happy uh, Thanksgiving week. Uh, we'll, Brett and I will be back um, tomorrow. We'll, we'll be doing a couple of special uh, thankful for uh, trades this week and also uh, the stats that we're thankful for in 2021, and uh, we, we hope that you have a great week, and uh, thank you once again, Weston, for joining, and uh, hopefully we'll have some news before the, I guess the uh, MLB kind of shuts down their cycle for the holidays. But uh, that's all we got for this edition of the Locked On Astros podcast. We'll be back and go Strohs.